work to figure out how to get the important information across to you so you can yes we have vocab today yes your dad would talk so far it's for illy not you would tell it's for me not about. We don't find stories. We would start talking about this, that, the other thing that everybody would go, what? Doug? I'm going to rant about how zero time I'm Your dad's name is Tom. Thomas. That's a Tom. What's your dad's name? Travis. I hate Travis. These are my favorite. No, it wasn't your dad. Anyway, how do you feel about Travis? I get extra. Travis? Yep. Travis is a good guy. No, I hate Travis. Oh, oh. Travis? Whoa. <laughs> Travis? I hate his Her dad. Can you give people pancakes? So obviously people right. don't My dad's name is Sullivan, but it's by Dave. Sullivan is his real name. I think it's actually Dave. Well, that's good. So pretty much every day is the Who is Chocolate? Who is Chocolate? Who is real Who is Chocolate? Squirrel? Yeah, squirrel. Squirrel. When we were doing the pancake thing, I was like, you were a bird challenge for yourself. So. I don't know, it's just 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we should have a pancake thing. Allie spins a spinner and draws one card without looking. Okay, two different things. Spinning a spinner, drawing a card. Okay. Then she sets the card aside and spins again and draws another card. Okay. So if she gets a three on the first time of spinning the spinner, does that affect her getting a three on the second time of spinning the spinner? Yeah. No, they're independent of each other. Okay. okay? Like they're independent like events. Okay. If she draws um a three card and then puts it back again and then draws another card okay does drawing the three the first time affect drawing a three a second time no because they're independent events okay they they are different from each other okay so <laughs> since uh since you can spin a three each time and draw a three each time, those are independent. Is it possible for her to do this? Yes. Now, is it possible for her to spin a three the first time, draw a three card, but then she sets it aside, doesn't leave it in there? and then spins a spinner again, gets a three again, and then draws a three out of here again. No, because she set it aside, so those are dependent. What she did on the first time here is dependent. Here, it's always gonna be independent because spinning a spinner is an independent thing each time. Just like flipping a coin is independent. Getting a heads or tails the first time is independent from getting a heads or tails the second time. Now, if you keep track of the heads and tails, okay? So what's the probability of getting two tails in a row? So if you flip a coin, heads or tails, you write down that it's a tails. You flip a coin again, getting a tails. Because you're looking at the first one, because you're saying, what's the probability of getting two tails? Because you get a tails the first time and you're keeping track, then those have something to do with each other, okay? They're not mutually exclusive from each other. So mutually exclusive and independent are um, tied in with each other, but they're not the exact same thing, okay? So today we're gonna talk about mutually exclusive events and independent events and they're for the most part kind of the same thing but they're not exactly the same thing 
But for today, you're not going to really have to know that much of a difference. We're just going to work on very basic probabilities today. The only ones that are going to get be a little more tricky are the things that overlap. And we'll go through that. Okay? All right. So, a number cube is a dice. How many of you have ever played Yahtzee in your life? Or, or um, what's that one? Um, but the... What's the one with the dice with the, the, you roll and you try to get a one or a five and you get to keep it? Farkle. <laughs> I did it three times. You threw me all three times. You were too quiet then, I guess, uh -huh. Illy. So Farkle. Have anybody played Farkle in here? Yeah. Couple. Well, obviously, Illy has and Ben has. So. A die has a one, two, three, four, five, six on it. It has six sides and it has a different number on each side. Okay? So, if you don't know what that is, I guess you grew up in a different era than I did because back in the day when I grew up, and I'm old, okay? What? <laughs> Yep, because we had nothing better to do because we had three channels on the TV and one of them was PBS, so that really didn't count. So we got two channels on the TV when I grew up, okay? So it wasn't like we watched a lot of TV. You know, we watched TV, but we did board games and we played cards a lot. So how many... Shh, how many cards are in a deck of cards not counting the joker 52. 52 okay 52 cards in each suit how many cards are there in each suit 13 13 there's 13 hearts 13 clubs 13 spades 13 diamonds okay so in this chapter you'll have to know some of that information okay that a die has six sides that a deck of cards, there's 52 cards, and each suit is 13, okay? And there's four of each thing. There's four, four aces, four kings, four jacks, and so on, okay? Some of those that, that you'll have to understand. Okay, so um, mutually exclusive events. So this is a vocab word. Are events with out the same outcome in each event? They're mutually exclusive of each other. They don't have the same outcomes. Okay. Okay, so um, you roll a die. If it's an even number or an odd number, the even numbers are two, four, and six. The odd numbers are one, three, and five. Those are mutually exclusive because these are not the same as these. Mutual exclusive events. Now, they come up with a little more, more complicated one, okay? So, they roll a die, and they have two options. You could get an odd number above a one, roll a three or a five, or you could roll an even number, a two, four, or six. So, then the poor little number one, it gets left out all on its own. Okay, so what's the probability that you roll an even number or a three or a five? Okay, so how many outcomes are there when you roll a die? Six different outcomes because there's six sides. Okay, what's the probability of rolling either an even number or a three or a five? How many numbers are there there? Five out of the six possible ones. Okay. 
you got five out of six chances of rolling either an even number or rolling a three or a five. Okay, that's a five out of six. Now, what's the probability of rolling an even number and a three out of a three or a five? Okay, if you roll one die one time, what's the chances of getting a five or a three and a two, four, or six? If you roll one time, you can't get them both. You can't get them both. They are mutually exclusive of each other. You can't get them both. So it's a big fat zero percent. You can't do it. Okay, you cannot roll an even number and a three or a five if you roll it once. Okay, they are mutually exclusive of each other. They cannot happen at the same time. Okay, so that's zero. What's the probability that you do not roll an even number? Okay, not an even number. Well, how many odd numbers are there? Three. There's three out of the six, which is one half probability that you do not roll an even number. Okay, let's look at the next one. A box contains 100 balls. 30 balls are purple, 10 balls are orange, okay? If you select a ball at random out of the box, what's the probability that it is either purple or orange? Well, the purple is 30, the orange is 10, so they add up to purple or orange is 40, right? 40 out of the 100 total balls, if we divide them both by 20, it's a 2 out of 5 chance, okay? Or 40% chance. So sometimes they'll ask for a decimal. Sometimes they'll ask for a fraction. And sometimes they'll ask for a decimal number rounded to the nearest hundredth, thousandth, whatever, okay? What's the probability it's not purple or orange? Not means everything else that's left, which is 60%. Um, it'll tell you in the little blue directions on the problems, it'll tell you what to do, whether they want Simplify your fraction. Because a lot of people, first period, were writing the 40 out of 100, and they wanted a simplified fraction, so they had to go all the way down to 2 out of 5. Okay? So it'll tell you in the little blue print what to do. Okay. Little Dungeons and Dragons here. Because instead of having a normal die, they have all kinds of weird die in, in Dungeons and Dragons. And here's a 10-sided die. So there's a number on each side. Okay? So... Here's different events. A, the, A says that the number is greater than 3. What's the probability of that happening on a 10-sided die that the number is greater than 3? 7 out of 10. Probability greater than 3 is 7 out of 10. Okay? All right, B says that the event is the number is an even number. So what's the probability of an even number? 5 out of 10, okay? So what's the probability of each of them happening at the same time, okay? Having both it being greater than 3 and an even number. Well, here's the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Those are all the possible outcomes. Which three can we get rid of right off the bat because of A? 1, 2, and 3. Okay. What ones can we get rid of now that are remaining out of them? 5, 7, and 9. So we have a 4 out of 10 chance or a 2 out of 5 chance of having an even number greater than 3. It's a 2 out of 5 chance. Now, 
the probability of A and B is 4 out of 10. Now, what we're going to look at here is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B at the same time. Okay? So, probability of A is 7 out of 10. Probability of B is 5 out of 10. The probability of A and B is 4 out of 10. What's 7 plus 5? 12. <laughs> That's good, Oliver. 12 minus 4 is 8 out of 10. Okay? So 8 out of 10 is a probability of this one and this one minus this one, okay? Which is 4 out of 5. Now, let's look at the probability of A or B happening. Let's look at the probability of A or B happening. So let's write out all the numbers again. So we're going to go over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10. Okay. The probability of A happening, we said, was 5 out of 10. Because there's this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So you got 5 out of 10 chance. The probability of B happening is this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. How many of them have an arrow pointing to them? Not two arrows, an arrow, one or the other. Eight out of 10. Notice how we got eight out of 10 here, okay? So when you have two events, the probability of A happening or B happening is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. A and B are called overlapping events. Okay? So ones that happen in both. So you take to find the probability of A or B, something or something else, you add up the two probabilities and subtract the ones that occur in both. Okay? So that's a little bit trickier and you'll have a problem or two about that today. All right. Now, when we have mutually exclusive events, A or B, mutually exclusive is one or the other, right? They don't overlap. When they don't overlap, you just add the probabilities together. When you have events that overlap, where we get in trouble is this middle area, okay? That's what throws off people's probabilities because probability is super easy when neither event has anything to do with each other, okay? When they're separate events, okay? But when they overlap, that's where it gets a little trickier, and we'll see that down here when we're throwing a ball at a target, okay? The other thing that we have to talk about is the complement of an event. The complement of an event is a set of all outcomes in the sample space that are not included in the event. So let's say there's a 70% chance of rain today. What's the complement of that event? Well, that's a 30% chance of rain. Okay? So complement, get that written down in your vocab sheet. Complement of event is a set of all outcomes in the sample space that are not included. Okay, so this 
question kind of got me the first time because I was thinking the target area was just the rings and not this whole area. But today in this class, I can actually explain it the right way. Okay, a student made a target which includes two overlapping squares. Okay, and he has a whole gigantic area. So it's like he, we made this whole board a target. And the whole board is 1,200 centimeters squared. Okay, 60 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Then I made an aiming point with a yellow sticky note and a blue sticky note. Okay, we want to prob find the probability of throwing a ball and hitting either the yellow sticky note or the blue sticky note that are overlapping each other out of this total area. Okay, so to find the probability of hitting those, I got to know the area of each of those. Okay, because I'm throwing it up there and I'm putting a blindfold on. So the probability of hitting the board somewhere that you hit either the yellow or the blue is what? Okay. Well, of the total area. And there's two different ways that they do it. I'll show you what I think is the easiest way. What's the probability of hitting the yellow area? Well, the yellow area is, it's 10 by 10, which is 100 centimeters squared out of the 1,200 centimeters squared of the target area. What's the probability of the blue area? That's the same. It's 100 over 1,200. But what's the problem? Well, we have an overlapping part. Okay? So we can't count 100 for each. Now, if the squares were separated, we'd get 100 plus 100 or 200 out of the 12. But because of the overlapping, we have to subtract. How much are we going to subtract? 25 out of the 1,200. So what's 100 plus 100? 200. Minus the overlapping part, which makes 175 centimeters squared out of the 1,200 centimeters squared. On your calculator, take 175 divided by 1,200. What do we get? A number. What? A number below one. Good job, Brandenburger. Point one four five eight. Okay. So if you were blindfolded and you threw a ball at this board and we had sheets of paper this big on them, the probability of you hitting one of those sheets of paper would be 0.158, okay? That's an overlapping event type of situation, which is a good visual because we will have other overlapping events, okay? So the probability of an overlapping event, which is a non-mutually exclusive event, probability of hitting one or the other is you add them together and subtract their overlap, okay? All right. Um, what? We'll talk about circles in a little bit. We're going to talk about a target and a circle in a little bit. Now, if you replace things, then it's independent events. Then they're independent events. What happens the first time does not affect what happens the second time. If you don't replace, then things get a lot more complicated. Then what happens the first time does affect what happens the second time. So what's the probability of choosing a green marble the first time and a green marble the second time if you replace them? No. There's 20 marbles in there. What's the probability of choosing a green one? 12 out of 20, which is a 3 out of 5 chance. 
And then the second time you have a three out of five chance. So if you draw one, put it back and draw one again, you got a three out of five chance each time. So then because there's two events happening, you have to multiply them together. What's three out of five times three out of five? Nine out of 25, okay? That's the probability of pulling a green and a green with independent events. Now, when it's dependent events, the probability of pulling a green the first time and a green the second time is all dependent on what you pull the first time, okay? Probability of pulling a green the first time is three out of five, right? What's the probability of pulling a green the second time? Well, it depends on if you pulled the green the first time. If you pulled the green the first time, which has to happen for this to both be green and green, the probability of pulling a green the first time, doing the second time, there's now 11 out of 19. So if you multiply these together, that's 33 out of 95 chance versus a 9 out of 25 chance if you go green and green. Now, where it really gets complicated, and we're not going there today, it was what's the probability of pulling a green and a red between the two pulls? Well, that depends. Then that is, well, you got a 3 out of 5 chance here, a 2 out of 5 chance here, and then depending on that, and that's where we're going later in this chapter, okay? Not red, green and violet, sorry, green and violet, okay? So, so when you have independent events and it's an and, what's the probability of one thing and the other? You multiply them together, okay? You multiply them together. The probability of rolling a four and the getting a heads when you do two different things. The probability of rolling a four is one out of six. The probability of getting a heads is one out of two. So the probability of rolling a four and getting a heads, you multiply them together, is one out of 12. So Alex cannot decide what shirt to wear today. So she chooses one at random. She just closes her eyes, grabs a shirt out of the closet at random. What's the probability that she picks a yellow shirt? What's the probability of a yellow in this situation? One half. One half. Two out of four, one half. Now, the probability that it's going to rain today is 40%. What's the probability that it's not going to rain? 60% or three over five. Okay? What's the probability that she chooses a yellow shirt and it doesn't rain today. One out of two, three out of five makes a three out of ten chance. Okay? So if they're independent events, events that do not affect each other, then you multiply them together to figure out them. Okay? There are 13 girls and 11 boys in class. The cards are shown mixed up and face down the table. Okay, so if we pick out somebody at random, well, what's the probability of that person being a boy and the number he chooses is an odd number? Not very high is correct. What's the probability of being a boy? 11 out of 24. What's the probability of an odd number showing up? 3 out of 5. Okay which is 33 out of 120, but that reduces down to 11 out of 40? Yeah. 11 out of 40 chance of it being a boy and the card has an odd number, okay? So mutually exclusive events and odd number events. Now, you're going to have a problem today, which involves a target type of thing. Basically a donut problem. If I'm blindfolded and throw a dart at this target here, okay? 
What's the probability that I land in the colored section? If I hit the target, assuming that I hit the target, what's the probability I land in the colored section? Well, if I know that this section is eight centimeters and this is six centimeters across, it has to do with the areas of them, correct? So if this is six centimeters across, what's its radius? Three. And what's the radius of the big one? Four. So to find the area of the shaded, I have to take the big circle minus a little circle. So the area of the big is pi r squared, which is pi times 16. The area of the little is pi r squared, which is pi times 9. If we subtract them, we get 7 pi, right? So to find probability, it's the amount of area divided by the whole area, right? Because I have to divide it by the whole area. Well, I already figured out the whole area. It's the area of the big, right? 16 pi. Pi's cancel. So I have basically a 7 out of 16 chance of hitting the blue shaded area if I blindfold and throw a dart and it hits somewhere on the target. It's a 7 out of 16 chance of hitting the blue versus um, hitting the not blue. Okay? So that's what you have to do. You have to take the area of the big minus the area of the little and divide it by the area of the big. So subtract first and then divide. Okay. I will put out your assignment. You should be able to finish it within class today.